Well, good things often come in small packages, and for more on that, we turn back to Larry Merchant for the subject of the smallest of all American amateur boxing stars, also the most decorated star on the team. Larry, what about Eric Griffin? Jim, the Olympics has become a sort of rite of passage for the elite boxing amateurs into the professional ranks. And Eric Griffin was certainly one of those, but he missed out on the Olympics the last time. What did he do? Like many others, he's waited four years to get there. Dawn in the Jasper, Tennessee mountains. One of thousands of dawns that have embraced the goals and dreams of an Olympic hopeful, Eric Griffin who three times has been a world amateur champion. I sacrificed so much all of my life, and I worked so hard to become an Olympic champion in 1992 in Barcelona, Spain. I think it'd be the biggest feeling and the biggest moment of my dream, winning the gold medal and putting it around my neck, seeing the American flag going up into the sky. His quest to make something of himself began early. He won his first boxing trophy at the age of 12. Four years later, he left home in Broussard, Louisiana to further his boxing education. The little big man buzzed around trainer and promoter Bob Jordan until they became a team in and out of the ring. Until Griffin's dreams and goals also became Jordan's. He came to my gym in Houston and asked if he could work there. And uh, very frankly, he didn't look like a fighter. But when I let him in the gym, he uh, showed us real quickly that he was one. Eric Griffin was on his way toward becoming the best 106-pound fighter in the world until the 1988 Olympic trials. Ladies and gentlemen, winner by unanimous decision in the blue corner, Michael Carbajal. A more crushing decision followed. He was notified that he had tested positive for marijuana. I cried like a baby. Um, I, I, you know, I really hurted a lot of people at the time. My first reaction was to tell him, get away from me. You know, I, I don't want anything else to do with you. Uh, going back to Louisiana and, and do whatever it is that you're going to do over there to make a living for the rest of your life. And he just wouldn't go. I had 10 years of my career and I didn't want to see that go down the drain. So, um, you know, I want to continue my boxing because this, this is what I love to do and this is my life. So, having lifted himself off the canvas, Eric Griffin is again doing what he does best, boxing, winning. Last November in Australia, he won his third straight world title. Meanwhile, in the professional ranks, Michael Carbajal has shown that there is an audience for the littlest guys. Eric is more mature. He's a lot better fighter now. To, to watch Eric stand on that podium with the national anthem playing, the gold medal around his neck will be the proudest moment of my life. In boxing as elsewhere, sometimes the long, trouble-strewn route is the most rewarding way to the top. Right now, we prepare to watch the continuation of one of the great ongoing rivalries in amateur boxing as Eric Griffin prepares to match against the man whom he has met in each of the last two world championship finals, Rogelio Marcelo of Cuba in Sydney, Australia. Back in November, Griffin collected his fourth consecutive victory over Rogelio Marcelo. Marcelo throwing punches in bunches, the busiest fighter there in Sydney, as he tried to pile up points on the computer system, was simply not accurate enough. As using better selection of his punches and more pinpoint accuracy, Eric Griffin rolled to a one-sided 36-18 victory that gave him his second world championship, his second world championship victory over Marcelo of Cuba. Rogelio Marcelo is 21 years old from Guantanamo, Cuba, two-time world silver medalist and silver medalist at the World Championships Challenge in 1990, where he also lost to Eric Griffin. Griffin is 24 years old from Broussard, Louisiana, now living and training, as you know, in Jasper, Tennessee. And he is the two-time world champion, the 1991 United States champion, the 1991 
United States Amateur Boxer of the Year, World Championships Challenge winner in 1990. He's done everything you can do as an amateur in the sport, except win an Olympic gold medal. That yet to come this summer at Barcelona, Spain. Tail of the tape, they are tiny. Five feet three, Griffin. Marcelo is five feet six, both at 106 pounds. And you see the reach advantage is for the American, Eric Griffin. And now we go to ring announcer Mark Biro for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, your third contest of the evening is scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the 106-pound light flyweight class. Judges at ringside, Hedy Bonav of Tunisia, David Leopold of Czechoslovakia, Tony Filippelli of the United States of America, Osvaldo Bisbal of Argentina, and Agustin Zaragoza of Mexico. Your referee for this event from Thailand, Pinit Wang Sin Vincent. Introducing in the red corner, El Hijo de la República de Cuba, Rogelio Marcelo. Marcelo. His opponent in the blue corner, representing the United States of America, the 1991 World 106-pound champion, Eric Griffin. Griffin, five two-minute rounds. Lou, when you've lost to a man four straight times, how do you gear yourself up to believe that you can beat him? Well, if you got the confidence, you got the character, you're going to go out there and try your best, and you got you got to do it one time. And uh, but you've got to remember one thing: Eric Griffin is a good fighter. You got to really, really be up to beat him. Griffin is a southpaw and a technician. Again, the difference in Sydney was punching accuracy. Marcelo is the busier fighter, and he once again starts off initiating the action. <laughs> Saw the short right hand from Eric Griffin. scoring if a punch is even partially blocked it cannot be scored as a clean blow Eric Griffin is quite adept at blocking punches with his gloves as he did there and there he scored a solid right hand in return Eric Griffin's moving himself in right into punching range he's a better puncher and he's starting to get to him right and now and he landed a right hand that wobbled Marcelo for just a second Marcelo, who started out moving forward, is now backing up all the time because of the comparative weight of Eric Griffin's blows. See, Eric's cutting that ring off him. He's, he's, uh, Marcelo is running, and he's making him run faster. All the Cuban fighters, Lou, seem to use this ultra-high energy style in which they bounce and move side to side constantly, but sometimes without any design or objective in there. No, all they're doing is moving. That's all they're doing, but they're not really setting up the opponent. They're not setting up uh, the opponent for a combination or anything like that. They're just on a move. And there you saw Griffin catch Marcelo against the ropes. So one of the questions that has come up in the last night and a half is whether this new scoring system is something the Cubans are going to have to adapt to because they have a more classic amateur hit and run style and this scoring system seems to favor aggressiveness. Take a big drive. Walking down. Walking down. Walking down. And drag. When I walk him down, he moves. Yeah. Huh? When I walk him down, he moves. Yeah. Well, if you run after him, you'll move faster. See what I mean? And, and if you run after him, you're not set the throw. If you walk, you're set the throw. You understand? Huh? Try to walk him, try to walk him so that you get him against the ropes. 
Tiene que marchar. No pierdas el equilibrio. Si no, don't lose your mind. Stay there. You gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. Keep your balance when you're throwing your punches. He's pressuring you constantly, so just keep your balance and throw your punches. The American did exactly what he should have done in that round, which was to remind his opponent why he lost to him four straight. To try to dominate him quickly so that he doesn't think he has a real chance. And as you saw from the scoring, all of Marcelo's rushes in round one turned out in the eyes of the judges to be a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. But now, Marcelo steps in and wails away again and gets a caution from the referee. Marcelo's not an unskilled fighter, Lou. He's got quick hands, very aggressive. This is his best fighting style, same right in close in punching. When he goes on the outside, he's not as effective. The more he moves, the less trouble he seems to give to Eric Griffin. That's right. If, if he stays right within range and, and slips and punches with Griffin, he does much better. But Griffin is a strong fighter. He'll keep right on top and get those body punches in. Accurate right jab by Griffin has started Marcelo backing up again. And there's a left hand in close by Griffin, but Marcelo trades a left, partially blocked. To the body punches that Griffin's getting in right now. That's what's going to slow this guy up in another round. Where's that nine-year-old who's going to tell us who's won the fight, Larry? <laughs> Will he be joining us later? He or she? So far, even this scoring system hasn't been able to miss the winner. A lot of counter-punching action in round two for Griffin, as he has allowed Marcelo to be the aggressor and has contented himself to be able to pick shots off and come back with heavier stuff. with haymakers. You have to give Marcello high marks for his funkiness, for staying in there, even though he seems to be in against the heavier hitter who has defeated him every time they fought in the past. And we want to remind you to get ready for the TV KO fight of the month for March. Tommy Hearn, six-time world champion, has waited four years to avenge his most devastating defeat. And that was the loss at the hands of Iran Barkley, who destroyed Hearns the first time. Now Barkley's back, and more unpredictable than ever. Hearns Barkley to the TVKO Fight of the Month, live from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Friday, March 20th, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, and on pay-per-view cable TV. Call your cable operator to order this pay-per-view special, TVKO. And you're hitting it up with your jab. Hey, you're hitting them with the jab every time you throw it, too. And that's counting. Yeah, so really, like, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Round three begins for Eric Griffin, a loser only one time in his whole career since the 1988 marijuana test incident, which knocked him out of the Olympic box off and took away his chance to unseat Michael Carbajal from the 1988 American Olympic team. weight class was Carbajal. 
I would think so. Mike Carvajal's a good fighter. He's world champion. That proves it. He went on to win a silver medal at Seoul in 1988. Not the gold, but the silver. Now, as Lou points out, he has won a professional world champion. Griffin whacking away. It's entirely possible that none of those blows will have counted in the accepted score. But all of them did some physical damage to Rogelio Marcelo. Shorter punches inside. Okay. Come in low. Throw short punches. Keep it on. He'll make the mistake and you you uh, counter, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> Eric, you need some flurries like the ones you got a little while ago. You need those flurries, honey. When you're inside, you do come over with flurries to the body and to the head. When you're in close, all right? All right. Then move. But, and then move and keep the jab on them. Okay. Use that one. You know, in case you were wondering what is the, the quality of these fights compared to professionals, on this level of international competition, well, I think a fight between two two men as, as skilled as these fellows are is better than 90% of the four and six and even eight rounders you'll see as preliminaries to a big championship fight. You're absolutely right, Larry. Uh, guys like this here can, put, with the proper training, step right in. They can go with these eight rounders because they've got that experience. Don't get, these guys have all had over 200 fights and they've been training, they've been boxing since they were like 10 years old. So they know what it's all about. Saw the scoring between rounds, which reflected the judges' appreciation for the greater accuracy of Eric Griffin's punching. Marcelo is at least as busy, but just does not land as cleanly or as much as does Griffin. It should also be noted that the Olympic program that helps to support amateurs today is one of the reasons that a fighter like Griffin is here. Whereas in other years, after he was 20 years old, after the last Olympics, he might have had to turn pro. Now he's getting enough support to support himself so that he could take another shot at the gold. And partially with the help of his patron, Bob Jordan. I think he's done a, Bob has done a terrific job keeping him in the amateurs, bringing him along. He's been wanting to win the goal, and I think he's going to get it this time out. Touching personal story. There'll be a lot of us rooting for Eric Griffin in Barcelona. And getting inside and coming up and under with blows that could count as scoring blows. The other kid, uh, Marcelo, is just winging him right now. Griffin's standing right there, all the heavier punches, especially to the body. That's what's weak. Well, there's no quit in Rogelio Marcelo, no. that's for sure. No, absolutely. He's, he's got had that character. 209 amateur fights, Lou. That's why I say he's had a couple hundred amateur fights. This kid is right in there. 192 wins. Incidentally, what if eligibility for boxing were the same as for, say, hockey or basketball, which allow full-fledged professionals to compete? What might the look like if it could use active professional experience well at 106 pounds you might use eric griffin two-time world champion or maybe michael carbajal although he's no longer fighting down that low in weight 112 pounds michael Carb michael carbajal would be a good choice and now you see the rest of the list which is champions like meldrick taylor and former world champion virgil hill and former world champion frank tate and undisputed world champion Evander Holyfield and former world champion George Foreman, all of them still active in the sport and all of them could compete in those weight classes if they were in fact eligible to do so. Bucks to get Evander there. Hello. Well, let me, let's make Well, Evander, of all fighters, might have more to try for an Olympic gold than most others, being disqualified as he was in the eyes of most people unjustly back in 1984 at Los Angeles here at ringside and we'll have him with us 
with a big coming up later on. He's a great supporter of American amateur boxing. Oh, he's, he's down in Georgia there. He's at every amateur tournament. He helps those kids any way he could. Uh, he does a fantastic job back at amateur boxing. I brought him where he's at. It would have been so easy for Evander to have been embittered by his Olympic experience. It didn't happen. Absolutely. Fifth round, Rogelio Marcelo of Cuba visibly tiring as Eric Griffin keeps up the pressure. Accepted score so far in the bout, you can see that it is a route. Who beat Marcelo 32 to 16 at the World Championship for another easy win, although right now to a warning for a low blow. Boy, Marcelo is doggedly Another fighter from Marcelo's hometown of Guantanamo. He's Cuban boxing. Heavyweight Felipe. have a great facility loop their eyes open and on the target eric griffin I got almost uh, moves but he also keeps his hands right there to go when he punches he can partially block any punches and still be in a position to counter the battle between eric griffin and rogelio marcelo another sided victory for griffin have 17 losses in his whole amateur career and five of them would be at the hands of Eric Griffin of the United States. Griffin knows he's won the bout. He circumnavigates the ring to celebrate. This is another division in which we've seen a streak of American success. I mentioned Carbajal having won the silver medal in 1988 at Seoul. Paul Gonzalez of East Los Angeles, the same area and the same original coach who produced Oscar De La Hoya, won the gold Angeles in 1984. I got the head here. Where's your mouth? Here? You got it? Yeah. Lou, let's take a look at a flurry from earlier in the round, and you see wildly busy Rogelio Marcelo and the slightly more studied and accurate Eric Griffin. Look at the solid punch of Griffin compared to King of Rogelio. Mm -hmm. That's the difference in the fight. Eric watching the target and coming up and under. Might have scored twice there with uppercuts. Right now, let's go to ring announcer the official numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, the five judges at ringside have computed a 36-10 decision for the blue corner, Eric Griffin. Griffin. So another loss for the Cubans. It is becoming a tough tournament for the world's best amateur boxing team. And we look at combined scores, which show that the judges saw anywhere from 30 to 68 scoring blows for Eric Griffin. Our CompuBox scores saw him landing 92 times. Marcelo getting scores anywhere from 20 up to 34 punches. CompuBox giving him credit for having landed 35. And the final score in accepted scores wasn't nearly as close or as uh, prolific as any of those there. We go up to Larry Merchant with Eric Griffin. Eric, congratulations. Was it important to you con to convincingly reassert yourself over this opponent who, you, who you've beaten every time? No, um, tell you the truth, Larry, I, I prepared for this fight about a month now. And um, I think I just got a, this, this the, the idea of Marcelo and beating him and fighting him four times, five times now, defending my title against him three times now. And I think all those bouts that I had with him and defend him all the time and, you know, get a, a duel match with him all the time, I think I got the, the, the idea of the, the Cuban style now. Are you concerned at all that somewhere between now and Barcelona, that some youngster will come out of the woodwork who you don't know about and he's just going to be the toughest guy around? I think, to, to, to be honest with you, if, 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 if they had another Eric Griffin and, and we had to fight each other, I think it'd be a draw. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you don't think there's anybody out no. there who is between you and the goal? No, no one. I'm, I'm, I'm undisputable. Uh, I'm full-time world champion now. I don't think there's nothing in, in the world in 106 pounds today can beat me. You smell it. I smell it good. All yeah. right, Eric. Right, I'd like to say one more thing. Thanks for HBO put me live on TV. Thank the man up above to get my life back together. And I'd like to say hi to all my fans back in Broussard, Louisiana, my mother, my brothers, and to my new bodyguard, Irvin Flusion. Thanks for HBO. You do pretty well in guarding your own body. Now <laughs> back to you, Jim. <laughs> All right, Larry, thanks very much. He can be our bodyguard any time. <laughs> All right, we are going to get ready now for the 125-pound fight, featherweight division between Ivan Robinson of the United States and Arnaldo Mesa of Cuba. Last night, American boxers scored two victories over Cuban boxers. It was an exciting event, and we're going to see if Ivan Robinson, close friends with the two guys who won last night, can come on to do the same tonight. So as we get ready for that fight, we remind you that there are two other bouts coming up later on this evening in the heavyweight and super heavyweight classes. And during this fight, we're going to have the pleasure of having Jerry Dusenberry, the vice president of USA Boxing, who is the architect of the computer scoring system and who will be an Olympic judge in the lone United States.